Welcome to worship with the Shared Lutheran Ministry of Fayette County, Texas Churches. We are uh, recording today at St. Paul in Fayetteville. This is a big day for us in the Shared Lutheran Ministry and in my life because this is my last Sunday with these churches. I have been here 11 years now and I'm retiring. So after services and the program that we have today in Fayetteville, I will be finished with my ministry and heading into retirement. So uh, in actuality, we are having a great big service at the J uh, SPJST Hall in Fayetteville. It's a polka service with dinner and um, auctions and a cakewalk and everything, but we created a special service so that we could still have an online and a radio service for you uh, today. This is going to be a communion service. We don't normally do that on the second Sunday, but since it's my last Sunday, I decided that we would have communion again today. So we'll give you a minute to get a glass of wine or grape juice, some bread or wafer, so you can have communion with us today. Even though I'm leaving, life goes on in the churches, and I'm so happy for that because that's the sign of a healthy church. Just a few things going on this week. Confirmation classes are starting on Wednesday in Reutersville. Quilting going on in Fayetteville. Bunko is meeting on Friday evening at St. Paul in Fayetteville, and a Saturday breakfast Bible study at 7.30 at the Riverside Cafe or 8 o'clock on Zoom. So we hope that you will be able to take part in those great ministries and um, we will continue to offer programs and also ways for you to serve through these churches, even though the churches will be in an interim time. So we are going to begin with the greeting and the opening litany, which we are using in the polka service. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. You are living stones cut from Christ, who is our rock and cornerstone. We are the church built on the firm foundation of Jesus Christ. You are members of God's household built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. We stand on the shoulders of those who went before us. In Christ, the whole building is joined together. Rising upward, you are becoming a holy temple in the Lord, a dwelling place for his spirit. We recognize that we have not come to God alone. We are here through the work of those who came before us, and we do not press on alone. We are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses urging us onward encouraging us to do the will of the Lord. You are four congregations bound together, not by law or constitution, 
but because together you can more effectively do the work of Christ's church. Therefore, work together as one, as living stones build on the foundation of Christ. We build with stones of love and faith. We build with stones of justice and compassion. We build with stones of hope and commitment. We build with stones of learning and service. Stand firm on the foundation, which is your mutual faith in Christ. Keep your eyes on the one who is both the author and finisher of the faith. Join hands with your shared ministry partners and build a church with zeal for the Lord. May God, Creator, Redeemer, and Spirit bless you in your calling. Amen, amen, amen. Let us pray. O God, our rock, you offer us a covenant of mercy, and you provide the foundation of our lives and our church, Jesus Christ, the cornerstone. Ground us in your word and strengthen our resolve to be living stones, building your kingdom in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our scripture reading for today is from 1 Peter, the second chapter. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you, then, who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builder has rejected has become the very head of the corner and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 21. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders, Have you never read in the scriptures, The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace is yours, and so is peace, from God our Creator and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In the mid-1800s, German settlers landed in Galveston and made their way northwest to what is now Fayette County, Texas. It was a long and treacherous journey, and they were glad to find this area to call home. 
One of the first buildings they constructed in their towns was the church. It was important to preserve the traditions of the church and for families to know the stories of Jesus and his love. Churches did whatever they could to remain vital and maintain their ministry. Many churches shared pastors and musicians over the years, and families moved from one community and one church to another. Passing the faith along remained a high priority. These folks were your ancestors. They began to forge a unique American lifestyle that includes a heavy dose of barbecue, polka music, kolaches, country music, cowboy hats and cowboy boots, and families whose roots run deep into the Texas soil. I love that when Weldon stands in front of the Reutersville Church, he can picture his grandpa up there fixing the bell tower, and that when J.R. and his cousin were replacing the paneling in the Ellinger Fellowship Hall, they uncovered old paneling signed by their fathers, who had replaced that earlier paneling and that Patsy can look through her mother's photos and recreate the Warrenton church history, and that all of our musicians can remember growing up in the Fayetteville church and just kind of passing the torch to one another, starting when they were teenagers. There are many ways to pass along the faith. Built on a firm foundation is part of our theme for today. We are built on the steady rock of Christ himself, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever, whose love never failed, whose arms are always open to welcome and receive, who transfigures you and me. We are built on the firm foundation also of our ancestors in faith, who settled here, who built the churches and laid the foundation for ministry. We are built on the firm foundation of worship practices, programs, and outreach that have honored Christ and have nourished the faith of those gathered. We are all of that. But if that's all we were, we would be stagnant. We would be in decline. We would be afraid of losing our buildings and afraid of losing our members. We would be inwardly focused. We would be afraid to reach out. We would be afraid to spend money because there just might not be enough to go around. We would lack vision and we wouldn't have energy to get anything done. Does that sound like us? Does that sound like the shared Lutheran ministry of Fayette County? No. We have a firm foundation so that we can build on it. We are living stones, able to shape the church for ministry in the future. And that is the rest of our theme. Living stones, building on a firm foundation. For 11 years I have preached that the church has entered the next reformation. The future of the church is not going to look like the past that most of us grew up in. The mission hasn't changed. We will still love, honor, and worship Christ, and we will still tell the gospel to a world that is desperately in need of hearing it. But the ways of ministry must change for our message to be heard. And that means there are growing pains. Everyone knows there has to be change, but no one wants to be the one to do it. Twenty years ago, these four congregations made a change to step into the future. By combining resources, you have become a thriving ministry with a vibrant faith. Hear this. You are such a healthy ministry. You have learned to use the strengths of each congregation and each member to maximize your ministry. And that takes work, hard work. Today, I encourage you to keep up that good hard work, to know the value of each member and to find the place for them to use their gifts. Find the strengths of each congregation. Then lean on each other, encourage each other, help each other so that together you will worship, learn, and serve in the very best ways to the glory of Christ our Lord.
Eleven years ago, God answered a long-held wish of mine. I always wanted to end my ministry in a little white church in the country where I could love the people and they could love me and we would just do great ministry together. God, as usual, was overly generous. I asked for a little white church in the country. God gave me four. People are always interested in how we make this work, and I can't begin to tell you how many times I've been asked to name my favorite congregation. Surely you must favor one of them. But I'm reminded of a, reminded of a woman I came to know in Mundelein, Illinois. She was in her 80s, and her health was failing. Her four daughters reached out to me to visit with her and bring her communion. They were a loving and kind family, and she cherished her daughters. So I was surprised after the woman's death when one of the daughters came to me with a confession. I got a letter from mother telling me that she loved me best, and she told me all the things she loved about me. I'm so embarrassed. Mother never played favorites, and I never knew. The next day, I heard from another daughter. Pastor, I don't know what to do. I've received a letter from my mother saying that she loved me best. She says such nice things about me. I never knew she had a favorite. Well, as it turned out, the mother had sent a letter to each of her daughters telling her why she loved her best. And so, Ellinger, I love you best because you are small but spirited, small but mighty. You have a can-do spirit, and you never let your size hold you back. You are hard workers and hearty singers. You uphold and appreciate female leadership. For years, your council is known simply as the girls. When we come up with new ideas, you will try anything once. You care deeply for those in need, and you use your resources to help your neighbors. Fayetteville, I love you best because you had the courage to reinvent yourselves, even changing your color from orange to purple. You were the congregation closest to death, but you are so friendly and so welcoming that now you are a growing congregation and you have a vibrant ministry that blends longtime members and new members. You have raised the musicians that served SLM and have made music and quilting your trademark. You make the best turkey stew. You always have an eye to helping others. Rudersville, I love you best. Because you have a commitment to tradition. You keep your roots firmly planted so the new growth has a chance to grow on a firm foundation. You are organized and structured in your ways, but you don't let that keep you from trying new ways. You are generous in sharing your building and your parsonage, your teachers and your youth leaders. You were the foundation church for many members who have moved on to other churches in the area, and you have raised up several pastors. It was your leaders thinking outside the box that brought this shared ministry together. Warrenton, I love you best because you have taken a courageous look at yourselves and decided to shift your priorities from being inwardly focused to decidedly outward focused. <laughs> you are generous with the other SLM churches and with people in need. You always say yes to ministry opportunities and you find unique ways to share the gospels. You work together as a family and you love to feed us. You make the best baked potatoes and barbecue brisket and grand poobahs. Four congregations, four distinct personalities, living stones united with a firm foundation and with a common vision. In our time together, we have accomplished several goals. We made our shared ministry known in our community and beyond. We led conferences for other churches to learn the benefits of sharing ministry 
and we raised money to help those who are beginning shared ministries. We have reached out to our community, providing workers and quilts and food. We have raised money for CASA, the Bright Stars of Bethlehem, Luther Hill, Shared Ministry Starts. We even had an Undy Sunday for the Rainbow Room, and we supplied a mom's room at the fair. We've cared for our young through day camp and Sunday school, through WWW and trips to youth gatherings. We have made a priority of visit, visiting the sick and the homebound. We have created ways of showing hospitality. Today, celebrate the ways we have been Christ's hands and feet in the world. But don't let it stop there. You have a firm foundation and lots of experience in ministry. God is preparing you for what come ne comes next. Listen. Pray. Communicate. Do. In the past, God has provided you with exactly the right leader at exactly the right time. And God will not let you down now. Take the steps you need to take and trust the leadership. As God is preparing you, God is also preparing the next right leader for you. Exciting times are ahead. It's time to move forward. As living stones, God is molding you into the church most needed in Fayette County in 2021 and beyond. Amen. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So especially on this day, having heard the litany of things that the shared Lutheran ministry of church, churches have done, we really thank you for bringing about all of this ministry. And whether you're members of our churches or visitors or people in the community, we just know how generous you have been in keeping the ministry of these four churches going. And we thank you for all you have done. 
and especially having recounted all of the ways that we are serving through our churches. We thank you for saying yes to those opportunities. Thank you to all of those who are coordinating our efforts, whether uh, Amen and the food truck or um, Second Chance and the quilt. Just thank you so very much for making sure that we are staying outwardly focused and taking care of our neighbors in need. Let us pray. God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Revealing God, you have made yourself known through bread and wine, water and word. Continue to nurture your church, that it is a place where your presence is experienced and shared. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Creating God, you brought life into being and called it good. Bring new creation to lands devastated by tornadoes, hurricanes, floods, fires, and other disasters, especially in Louisiana, New Jersey, and New York, California, Oregon, and Nevada. Restore forests and curb overflowing waters. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Protecting God, you desire all people to live in peace and safety. Provide for all who are in danger. Strengthen first responders to help meet the complex need of others. Provide care and compassion as they face trauma themselves. Give strength to those caring for COVID patients and give healing to the patient. Be with those who have requested our prayers, Debbie, Rodney, Ed, Kim, Gerald, Orville, Pat, Nikki, Dewey, Marilyn, Matt, Arlie Wayne, Lisa, Willie, Lillian, Linda, Ted, Leah, Roger, Ivy, Donna, and the family and friends of Jean and Wesley. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Transforming God, you announce release to the captives and freedom to the oppressed. Break chains of discrimination and injustice. Amplify voices that go unheard and inspire us to advocate for those who are overlooked. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Forming God, you gather these four churches into a shared community of faith. Shape our communal life that in our prayer, praise, and worship, we honor you and encourage one another. Keep our disagreements civil and increase our joy in working together. Especially as we begin an interim time, bless our leaders with wisdom and patience. Raise up and make known to us the next pastor you are preparing for this call. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And we lift up Pastor Marcia before you. Thank you for her years of service with the Shared Lutheran Ministry, for her joy in ministry and her compassion with our members. Bless her and Jack as they leave us to enjoy their retirement. We are grateful for the work of Bishop Mike, Brother Chris, and Pastor Tracy in leading our synod. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You may offer your prayers at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Redeeming God, you accompany your people through every stage of life. We give you thanks for the saints who now rest in your embrace, especially those dear to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll begin the communion part of our service now, so if you would please make sure you have your communion element set before you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me.
Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We join our voices with all the faithful, praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. All who hunger and thirst, come, the table is set. The table is ready. As you take the wafer, the body of Christ given for you. As you drink the wine, the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ, keep you in peace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into the feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Receive the benediction. You are living stones, a royal priesthood, a chosen people. May the love of God, the firm foundation of Jesus Christ, and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit bless you in your service. Amen.
Go in peace, living stones, building the kingdom of God. Thanks be to God.